Greetings. We're looking at question number five here from the 2014 free response exam. And you can see we've got a nice chart here with some nonmetals on the top and formulas of compound all involving fluorine. And you can see question five says some binary compounds that form between fluorine and various nonmetals are listed in this table. A student examines the data and poses the following hypothesis. The number of fluorine atoms that will bond to a nonmetal is always equal to 8 minus the number of valence electrons in the nonmetal. So based on this hypothesis, what should the formula of the compound that forms between chlorine and fluorine? So I need to follow his hypothesis, 8 minus the number of valence electrons. Chlorine has 7. 8 min minus 7 is 1, so ClF should be the formula of the compound. Yay! Now, in an attempt to verify this hypothesis, the student researches and finds out that there is a ClF3 molecule. So in this box, we want to draw the complete Lewis electron dot diagram. And yes, it says electron dot diagram but drawing dashes for bonds should be totally acceptable. And so the molecule is ClF3. First, how many valence electrons? So I've got four atoms in this molecule. They're all halogens, seven valence electrons each. So I have 28 valence electrons. One chlorine, three fluorines. So I'm going to want to have chlorine in the center with three fluorines around it fill in my valence electrons on fluorine. So I've got three, six, nine, or sorry, two, four, six valence electrons in each fluorine. That's 18 valence electrons plus two, four, six in the bond. So right now I'm at 24. So I'm missing four. Now, our good friends, the halogens, are not going to double bond. Chlorine, okay, chlorine's valence electrons are, you know, 3p5, 3s2, 3p5. So when they're, they're in the third energy level. So also in the third energy level is the 3d sublevel. Because of that, chlorine has the ability to uh, violate the octet rule. Okay, again, any element that has d orbitals, a d sublevel available, will violate the, can violate the octet rule. Okay, um, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine are classic examples, and then any other big elements after that. Remember, boron can violate it by only needing six because it's a tiny. But, you know, again, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, fairly common. Remember that one day in class, I in, inhaled the sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, and that was the gas that made my voice go really deep. So there you can see sulfur can have six fluorines around it and violate the octet rule. So anyway, going back here now, we still need four valence electrons. I'm not going to double bond, so the chlorine will have two lone pairs. All right, so that would be an acceptable diagram for this molecule. Next up, it says two possible geometric shapes are trigonal planar and T-shaped. Okay, T-shaped and trigonal planar. The student does some research, learns that this molecule has a dipole moment. So the ClF3 molecule has a dipole moment. Which of the two shapes is consistent with this fact? All right, justify your term, your answer in terms of bond polarity and molecular structure. All right. Again, anything attached to fluorine is going to be a polar bond, except another fluorine. So we can see that we have three polar bonds here. And if I have a trigonal planar shape, that's symmetrical. All Everything's on the same plane. Those dipole moments would cancel out. Uh, T-shaped would then not. Okay, again, I told you not to worry too much about seesaw and T-shaped and square planar because it involves SPD hybridizations. But, you know, it, it's in here, but you don't really have to know because I told you to be familiar with trigonal planar, linear, bent, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, pyramidal. Okay, so you should recognize, all right, I've got three dipoles. They're all the same magnitude. The trigonal planar will allow those to cancel out. Okay, so you can say 
T-shaped because it's not symmetrical, the dipoles will not cancel out, leaving the dipole moment. Or you could say T-shaped because trigonal planar is symmetrical, and the dipoles would cancel out, so a trigonal planar molecule would not have a dipole moment. Probably you would think, I think, more along this line because we're more familiar with and should be comfortable with the trigonal planar shape. All right, so now, in an attempt to resolve the existence of CLF3, um, with the above hypothesis, the student researches compounds and assembles this list. All right, based on atomic structure and periodicity, so our answer has to include atomic structure and periodicity, propose a modification to the hypothesis. All right, so atomic structure, what they're looking here, or what they're looking for here is, you know, what is the structure of these molecules? And the thing that pops to me is that we only have an odd number of fluorines. Okay, this says F2, but technically it's fluorine attached to one other fluorine, one fluorine. 135, 1357. All right, and we knew from above that we have ClF and ClF3. So the next thing you notice is that, okay, as we are going down this group of halogens, I have an additional compound that will form. And so that's the periodicity they're looking for. So again, whatever you decide, you need to include atomic structure, which again is look at the number of fluorines, and then periodicity. We see that there's a trend as you're, we are going down in family. So as it's increasing in atomic number or size. So one thing that you might consider, or maybe you have, that the valence electron level or the period that the um, halogen is on, when you subtract one, that tells you how many compounds it has. And those compounds then have an odd number of fluorine starting with 1, 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so for example, bromine, bromine is on the fourth period, or the fourth, has electrons on the fourth energy level, valence electrons. Minus 1 is 3, so it's going to have three compounds, BrF, BrF3, and BrF5. All right. So I hope that helps with this question, and I'll see you soon.